Nidenion is a science fiction feature project, a movie produced and designed by Magna Mana and Jack Moig. It is a space opera full of video effects, CG environments, spaceships and tons of complex compositing works. Producer and director Jack Moig, well-known German modeler creator, made painter and Star Wars geek, was in charge of producing hundreds of video effects shots for this movie. Equivalent to any other modern video production, Almost each shot was separated in countless layers and composed with 3D sceneries or backdrop paintings. This requires extreme good balancing of talents, time and money budgets. We will today take apart the production of one of those shots in order to show the following production components, problems, disadvantages and the solutions. In the first chapter we will be confronted with a problem. Large 3D sceneries in a long shots cause long render times. In a short time and short budget production, rendering a frame longer than an hour is a pure luxury. The decisive element of our business is to deliver the moving pictures on time and render time monsters and blockers can cost us in some situations a whole job. In the next chapter, we will disassemble the scene into static and dynamic geometry. This is a very important step of the production, then the correct decision in this step can have huge impact on the production and render times. As next, we will bake with flat iron plugin with few clicks our complete static scene in few bitmaps. No other tool on the market today offers the flexibility, speed and the quality measurable unwrapping and baking of clusters of objects like flat iron. In the material analysis chapter, we will stop for a moment to explain basic settings and advantages of shell material in combination with flat iron baking procedure. Scene assemble and scene render chapter will show us in a simple way how to put together static geometry baked with flat iron and other animated objects in order to achieve minimal render times. At last, we have a short overview of render layers and compositing techniques of the shot. The hunger you see here was completely created and rendered in 3D Studio Max. The full HDTV scene consists of over 1 million faces, tons of textures, animated spaceship, runway lights, elevators and on top of it an extra long 25 seconds camera flight over the whole scene. Because of the camera movement it was not possible to involve May painting in the scene and the whole level had to be rendered as a full 3D geometry. The main problem by this scene was actually the long render time per frame. Both production time and the money budget were not allowing us render times where one frame has to be calculated more than an hour. We see here the render setup of Mental Ray and the render initialization of a single frame. A deadly combination of moving animated objects in the scene, final gender shooting rays causing flickering, glossy reflections that increase rendering many times and on top of it the motion blur multiplier cause millions of rays and bounces with the following effect. You can see it by yourself how even strong quad-core machines takes forever just to calculate one basic final gather pass. To avoid this problem, we will simply bake the whole scene with help of flat iron plugin into few bitmaps, preserving all shadows and lights and use it as a background reflection and illumination generator. This will cut the render times more than 10 times without having any visual influence on the render quality. Since we will use it as a reflection and illumination scene element, we need to get rid of all objects that will later have no influence on the scene lightning and reflections. Hundreds of small pipes, screws or plates in the upper part of the scene are completely irrelevant, so we will hide them simply. After all tiny and detailed elements are hidden, the rest of the scene will be parted into five layers. Those five layers will later use five baked bitmaps and reflect in the glossy ground, spaceship or simply illuminate the scene. You can see in the corner of the Max the layer manager where those five layers are already organized. I will now create for each layer a selection group set. 
It is a very basic procedure. We select all objects in a certain layer, in this case ceiling, and create a selection set of it. Let's call it top. Next layer consists of all construction pillars and we will put them into the selection set skeleton. I will repeat it with the right and left wall in the same way. At the end, the two remaining sets are created. One portal containing the platform in the distance and the selection set ground containing the large ground plane and runway lights. That is actually a whole part of the scene management and we can start baking them into bitmaps. As next we will pick flat iron from the utilities menu. Flat iron will bake now all objects in the scene in five bitmaps. We must be careful about the UV channels since UV channel 1 or 2 are already used by the original texture maps in the scene. In order not to overwrite them with the new UVs we are about to create, it is always recommended to use a UV channel you still didn't occupy in the scene. I will jump here to the channel 6, since I know that this one was not in use in the production. As next, we will select unwrapping method. This scene consists mostly of hard surfaces and no organic forms, so we will toggle the hard surface button. Third step is to define a bitmap size. The bigger the bitmap, the more pixels are in and we gain more details. For the main production, we will probably use 4096 pixel images, but I will now set it for the sake of the speed to 800 pixel. All our objects need to be unwrapped now into the UV channel 6. To do this, we can use either mesh enable parting, which automatically parts the object in clusters using the spinner value, or using already predefined selection sets that we have manually created. You can see all our predefined selection sets in the selection window. They are identical to the five sets we have created previously. Selection sets are easy to select and manage. You can always access them from the top of the menu. After selecting all of them, all we have to do is to press the unwrap button. In the next few seconds, Flatiron will unwrap each selection set we have predefined into a UV map. At the end, Flatiron will pop up with the last unwrap set, which means that the calculation is over. Don't get irritated because you see only the last unwrapped image. All other sets are unwrapped too. Flatiron doesn't want to shoot dozens or hundreds of windows on the screen after each unwrapping process. In the first place, choosing the output folder and file format is very important. While TGA and TIP are ok, beware that only file formats like HDAR and OpenARX can save the illuminance value. In the middle of the output interface of Flatiron is the render element window. Depending on the renderers you have installed, you will get a list of all render elements Max can support. Since we will in this tutorial create mostly reflection environments, I will choose Complete Map, which will allow me to bake into it both lights, shadows, GI, bumps and speculars. Directly below it you can see the following advanced options. Make self-illuminated material. This option will create a standard max material with 100% self-illumination, making it independent from the light's influences. Add a shell. This option will create a backup slot containing your original material, additionally to the new standard material with the baked complete map. This is a great feature, which allows us to work and test baking without destroying original scenes materials. To resume this part once again, we have automated flat iron with these options to bake a complete map, create a new standard material as a part of a shell material, still preserving the original shaders, copy the baked texture into the new created standard materials and make it self-illuminated. It sounds complicated, but once you have tried it, you will intuitively see that it is easy, flexible and logical procedure. Once we have set up these few options, Flatiron will play just as we have directed it. We want at the end everything finished without spending a lot of manual work and time with the organization of maps and materials. That is actually everything. All I have to do now is to press the big button bake and make a coffee in the meantime. 
while Max renders one selection set after another, you can already get the impression of how the maps will look like at the end. After the last map has been rendered, Flatiron loads them automatically into the viewport. You can see now the complete scene mapped with the fully baked materials, lights and shaders. In the later production, all those baked scenes are going to be used as a background for the shots. Let us make a stop for a moment and explain some of the executed functions in order to better understand what was done and how to control materials in optimal way. I will pick one of the five created materials, let's say the hunger ground. It is a shell material and it consists of two materials. The first one on the top is the original mental ray shader, unchanged just as we created it, with reflections and all other texture maps inside. In the second slot is a new created standard material, created by Flatiron after the rendering process. While creating this shell material, we have actually backupped our original manta ray material and added another completely new material type parallel to it. The advantage is clear, with one click on the button Clear Shells in the Flatiron interface, we can call back all original materials and revert the scene to the moment before we started baking. It is time to compose previously animated elements of the scene with the new baked environment. I will load as first the landing sequence of the shuttle with the original light setup from the old scene. As next, I will merge into this scene our baked hunger that we have just rendered with flat iron. This baked hunger will act as illumination and shading component. It should have only indirect influence on the, on the shuttle. For this, I will select the big hunger, open the object properties and toggle off visible to camera and receive shadows. The extra lights we have already in the scene will affect only the shuttle since the hunger is self-illuminated and excluded from their influence. When we render the scene now, we will get a full anti-aliased frame with all details in less than a minute. The final render of this scene took now only 10% of the original render time. I will switch now to the compositing software in order to show you how easy those parts can be put together in order to achieve a harmonic look. Here are some background plates, uh, for example stars and the planet, and our hangar baked with flat iron, and few extra reflection layers on the ground and some extra details. Also there are tons of additional layers like flags, run lights, reflections, speculars, which render really very very fast and they add extra details to the global look and feel of the scene. Here you can see also the animated shuttle with no GI flickering. Further below you can also see the rest of the indoor scene that was also baked in the same way with the flat iron. Since there is no change of the illumination in this part of the scene, there was no reason why to render them at high cost as a full 3D geometry. They were too baked in a few dozens of large complete maps. Once we put them all together, add some fog and basic color correction, the job is actually pretty much finished. The render times were reduced from 30 or 60 minutes per frame to less than 5 minutes without any visible loss of quality. This technique can be also engaged in many other different cases. You can actually bake everything 50 meter away from the camera into a complete map solution and render only the moving and interacting objects. 
I hope you liked this tutorial about scene texture baking and we invite you to download Flatiron from our homepage www.texturebaking.com and start solving some of your production problems with this great tool.